I'm Maria Prisma. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. It's the feast of St. Ignatius of Antioch. He's the third bishop of Antioch. St. Peter was the first bishop. Then you had St. Evodius and then uh, St. Ignatius. And he actually knew uh, St. Peter and St. Paul. He was a disciple of St. John the Baptist. And uh, during Trajan's reign, he gets hauled in. So I'll, I'll read you some things here first of, of what happens. Trajan is on his way. He's on a campaign against the Parthians, which are, that's over in what we'd now call uh, Iran, basically. And he, so he's, he's on his way east, and he stops in Antioch on the 7th of January, 107, and, said, and, and, and reading from Father Butler. His first concern was about the fair religion and worship of the gods. And for this reason, he resolved to compel the Christians either to acknowledge their divinity and sacrifice to them or suffer death in case of refusal. It's the typical pagan emperor stuff. So he calls Ignatius before him, and here we have from the Acts. And uh, Trajan says, Who are you, wicked demon, that dares transgress my commands and persuade others to perish? And, and St. Ignatius says, No one calls Theophorus a wicked demon. Theophorus is his surname, Ignatius. Trajan says, Who is Theophorus? Ignatius answered, He who carries Christ in his breast. Trajan replied, Do we not seem to thee to bear the gods in our breasts, whom we have assisted, who we have insisting us against our enemies? And St. Ignatius says, You err in calling those gods who are no better than devils, for there is only one God who made heaven and earth, and all things that are in them, one Jesus Christ, his only Son, into whose kingdom I earnestly desire to be admitted. Trajan said, Do you not mean him that was crucified under Pontius Pilate? St. Ignatius answered, The very same who by his death is crucified with sin, its author, who overcame the malice of the devil and has enabled those who bear him in their heart to trample on him. Trajan said, Do you carry Christ about within you? Ignatius answered, Yes, for it is written, I will dwell and walk in them. Then Trajan dictated the following sentence. It is our will that Ignatius, who says that he carries a cru crucified man within himself, be bound and conducted to Rome to be devoured there by wild beasts for the entertainment of the people. The holy martyr, hearing this sentence, cried out with joy, I thank thee, O Lord, for honoring me with this token of perfect love for thee, and to be bound with chains of iron in imitation of thy apostle Paul for thy sake. So there's a couple of things before I go on that's just we, we ought to remark on, and that is he has no human respect. He's hauled before the most powerful man in the world, and he's not ashamed at all to confess Christ. Yet how many people are afraid to say grace in a restaurant? To be thought of as Christians, let alone Catholics. The martyrs put us to shame. Uh, as he's hauled off, it takes a very long time to get him there. They put him on a ship, and it's kind of stopping all over the place. And uh, it stops at Smyrna. He meets with St. Polycarp there. Other churches are sending uh, people to, to meet with him and so forth. And then he writes a series of letters that are very beautiful. Uh, and I'll just read... Uh, an excerpt from one of his letters. I believe this is from his letter to the Romans. Pray to God for me that God will give me both inward and outward strength, that I may not only say but do, that I may not only be called a Christian, but be found one. For if I shall be found a Christian, I may then deservedly be called one, and be thought faithful when I shall no longer appear to the world. Nothing is good that is seen. A Christian is not a work of opinion, but of greatness, when he is hated by the world. I write to the churches and signify to them all that I am willing to die for God unless you hinder me. I beseech you that you show not an unseasonable goodwill towards me. Suffer me to be the food of wild beasts, whereby I may attain unto God. I am the weed of God, and to be ground by the teeth of the wild beasts, that I may be found the pure bread of Christ. Rather entice the beast to my sepulchre, that they may leave nothing in my body, that being dead, I may not be troublesome to any. Then I shall be a true disciple of Jesus Christ, when the world shall not see so much as my body. Pray to Christ for me, that in this I may become a sacrifice to God. So he's looking forward to his martyrdom. And in fact, there's something very interesting in the Mass. It's very unusual, actually, because the communion is from his Acts. And the communion... Uh, uh, Antiphon is Frumentum Christi sum, dentibus bestiar molar, upanus mundus invinior. 
That's actually what St. Ignatius is writing. It says, I am the weight of Christ. May be ground by the teeth of beasts, that I may be found pure bread. So we actually hear this in the, in the Mass today. He finally gets to Rome. So this is in January. It takes him to the 20th of December. He gets to Rome. And I read from Father Butler again. The last day of the public entertainment. He is presented to the prefect of the city, to whom the emperor's letter was delivered at the same time. He was then hurried by the soldiers into the amphitheater. The saint, hearing the lions roar, cried out, I'm the weed of the Lord. I must be ground by the teeth of these beasts to be made the pure bread of Christ. Two fierce lions being let out, out on him, they instantly devoured him, leaving nothing of his body but the larger bones. Thus his prayer was heard, and we have witnesses. After having been present at this sorrowful spectacle, which made us shed many tears, we spent the following night in our house and watching and praying, begging of God to afford us some comfort by certifying us of his glory. They relate that their prayer was heard, that several of them in their slumber saw him in great bliss. So that's just a little bit on St. Ignatius of Antioch and his martyrdom. But pray to him that we will be faithful. We have to ask for fidelity. It is not natural. It's something supernatural. And in every direction, this world we find ourselves in is pressing on us to try to get us to deny in different ways or at least subvert or push down any evident sign of our Christianity that we really are for Christ. Pray to him for the grace to be faithful, to be faithful witnesses even unto death. 